G'day team, Adam Kogan here at NDC Melbourne. What a beautiful city we have here and I am sitting next to Heather Wild Renzi. How are you Heather? I'm doing well, how are you doing? Fantastic, so uh, Heather does everything. Super techie, leadership, done talks on everything. Why did you decide to do a talk about bro culture at NDC? Because I can. I mean, honestly, I'm at the point in my career where doing a talk like this isn't going to cause blowback. And uh, for a lot of women, uh, they would be scared to do it because it would affect them. Right. Okay. So if you were to summarize your talk in two minutes, what is it? So basically, insert minority here are discriminated against in uh, the tech culture, basically by design, because the tech, uh, like bro culture is tech culture. My, my talk is about helping people to understand uh, how to identify where bro culture is and how to change it for, uh, to become more inclusive. So if I look at myself, run a tech company, mm -hmm. we have about 70 people. There's only a thin slice of women, mm -hmm. um, not through design. But really, I would say uh, there is no bro culture because we are trying our best to hire friendly people that love learning. Mm -hmm. uh, have I got a problem? Culture does come from the top down. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're trying mm -hmm. to have a, a good inclusive culture, then you'll start to see the benefits of that. One of the things that uh, I'm hearing from you right now, though, is that you only have a thin sliver of diverse people in your company. No. Well, I have lots of nationalities. I have Russians, Brazilians, Indians, Pakistanis. I have lots, So, but you know, thin sliver of women specifically. Thin sliver of women. And what are those women's roles? Only a few programmers mm -hmm. and mostly admin. You know, we do have some bosses in the different states. Uh, one of those is a woman who was promoted from the Sydney office, who went to the Brisbane office. And who has the ability to do the hiring? Ah, a woman is in charge of that. In fact, two women are in charge of that. Okay. Hmm. And are they writing the job descriptions as well? No, no that's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> so um, in order to start to shift your culture a little bit, um, you need to start to write more inclusive job descriptions. That's really important. Yes. G so, give me an example of stuff you've seen. There's, there's Things like masculine language and feminine language. But if you want more inclusive language, you would say like, we're, we're looking for a, a team focused programmer. Mm. Um, I, I love hearing that <laughs> because I skim a lot of them and I'm always looking through tech, which tech, 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 that's correct. But I don't go through the nuances of the, the rest of the description. Mm. Another thing is uh, the average person uh, spends about 45 seconds looking at a job description. If they can't finish to the end of it in 45 seconds, then they're going to move on to the next thing. But men will apply um, if they're only like 40% qualified for something. Whereas a woman will only apply if she feels she's 90% or more qualified for a job. So if you have a long list of requirements that you've put on that position and uh, they're not really requirements, mm then you've immediately discounted women from applying. Three bullet points that they will actually need coming in on day one. Because the rest of the things, as everyone knows who's worked in tech, you will learn on the job. Mm. So I know we're nearly at the end, but I know you talk a lot on leadership and I know you talk about working less hard. I'm guilty, like a lot of programmers, working too hard. Uh, can we finish with a tip on working less hard? One thing that I do that's very important mm. is um, every uh, once a week, I do a tech-free day. And once a year, I do a tech-free week. What's tech-free mean? So tech-free is um, I don't answer emails, don't answer texts. But for the tech-free week, that's go on a meditation retreat, go on a cruise, go out into nature, go, and no one can reach me. And my team knows they cannot reach me. I will not respond because I won't even have my phone. But what can you do on an ongoing pattern? Like that's one day a year. Turn off day. your notifications. Notifications, yeah. They do a lot of damage, don't they? Yeah, just keep yourself... I mean, do not disturb all the time. Are you? Yes. Oh, wow. And then I have blocks of time where I will check my email. It's never a, an immediate response because that puts you into the trauma cycle where you hear the notification, you think it's immediate, you have to do that. Nothing is immediate. Right. Oh, that's a very good tip. Thank you, Heather. <laughs> All right, that was awesome. So hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed that interview with uh, Heather Wild. Uh, this is Adam Kogan in Melbourne, NDC, signing off. Cheers. <laughs>